Hello and welcome to Happiness and Wellness. My name is Gita Arora and today we have a guest who took the bold courageous step of stepping out of the corporate corporate world and stepping into entrepreneurship. Stay tuned for more. Today's guest is Larry Cornett, Dr. Larry Cornett. He's a PhD in uh, psychology. That's right. Yeah. And he's a founder of Voice Kick and Brilliant Forge. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks I for having me. Absolutely. I think we've got a lot to talk about. It's going <laughs> yeah. to excite a lot of people because there's a lot of people on that journey that uh, they, they search how or they're seeking how to change careers from the corporate to the, um, to the world of entrepreneurship right. or taking charge of their own lives. And you've done it. Yeah, yeah. How did absolutely. you come to the journey? Um, you know, I, I would say it started um, after eight long years. I had been on uh, the corporate ladder, kind of climbing that at eBay and at Yahoo. And it was, um, you know, it's, it's a little stressful. As anybody who's been to the corporate world, I know you have as well. A little? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> very stressful. Um, and so I'd say that, you know, basically it got to the point where I realized I was spending pretty much all my day in meetings. And so I was in meeting after meeting after meeting, mm -hmm. planning meetings, resource meetings, political meetings, eating strategy, at meetings. eating in meetings. I don't think I ever sat in my desk for three and a half years. Um, and so what I realized is I was getting really far away from what I love to do, which was creating products. And I also had um, not a lot of control over the full decision making process. And so a lot of things that we wanted to do in terms of the resources for the product, the revenue for the product, in the end, we didn't have that decision-making power. Um, and so I really wanted to kind of leave that environment and get into a situation where I had more control, essentially, over my life and a lot more freedom to do what I wanted to do. That's awesome. That's really awesome. That's, you know, it takes a lot of courage to do that, to shift from that world. And I, in my practice as well, as an Ayurvedic practitioner, you know, in, in, in health and wellness, yeah. what I find is there's so many people working in the corporate world at like Google and Facebook and all these places, but they end up coming to see me. Yeah. I mean, don't, the, don't those places offer like all the massages and haircuts right. and all the things you need to be well? Um, so yeah. like, what are they looking, what are they searching for? And what I find across the board is that uh, there, there's so much truth to what you're saying about, you know, there's this, I look at it like this, there's this big entity, the corporation, right. and then people who have all these gifts and skills and, and, and techniques that they have that's, that's theirs, they get hired for those things, right. but you end up getting sucked up by the entity that wants you to do it their way. Right. So now you right. longer, no longer have any, any control over what you went in there to do, right. and that's probably the frustrating part. So yeah. what, what did you see? What, I mean, what did you want to solve? What was the problem you wanted to mm. solve in order to you know, shift your career in that way? Yeah, I guess, you know, being in Silicon Valley, you also see a lot of startups. Um, and yes. so, you know, I, when I was at Yahoo, I'd be on the other side of the table from a, a small startup that was really trying to get their break and mm -hmm. trying to work with Yahoo. And I saw how hard it was um, for those founders and for those really small companies. Um, and so I really wanted to help them. That's how I, I started is essentially I left the corporate world and I started a company called Brilliant Forge. And that was to help small businesses and startups with product and design and business strategy and really help them mediate that conversation with these big companies mm -hmm. and try to figure out how do I position myself to be a resource that's useful for that company? How do I raise a round of funding? All the things that are really challenging for a small mm -hmm. uh, entrepreneurial founder to do, but I'd had experience with that. And so that's really where I started is, is helping those people. So what, what is uh, Brilliant Forge and, and Voice Kick? What are the, what's the, what are the two yeah. uh, different companies? Yeah, they are. You didn't, they try, are very you didn't start different. one, you started yeah. two. <laughs> yeah, I started Brilliant Forge about six years ago, so that's, that's when I left the corporate world. Mm -hmm. And that was working with startups, uh, a lot of tech startups uh, and small businesses. It shifted a bit, I would say, in the most recent years, is that I found that I really enjoy working with really small companies. Um, I love the energy, I love the passion, and I like working directly with a decision maker. And so I've uh, basically shifted to helping entrepreneurs and people who want to become entrepreneurs and really help them find a way to make a living doing what they love and find a way to be successful so they can keep doing that. 
Um, but about two and a half years ago, I wanted to really do my own tech startup, and so I started a second company, uh, which is really me, a designer, and an engineer. Um, and it started out as a micro-podcasting service. Mm -hmm. So we had an app, we had a web service. But about a year ago, as we were looking at the, the traction we were getting, we said, okay, this isn't quite working. We listened to our users and said, what do you want from this? What are we missing? And we transitioned to becoming a video storytelling app, which is what we're working on right now. It's called Pearl. Oh, the Pearl, yeah. Right. That's, uh, so what, what's, uh, what differentiates the Pearl app from those things in the market right now? Yeah, there's a lot of other apps in the market that are kind of playing in the photo and video space. Mm -hmm. uh, but our focus is really on storytelling. And so we really believe in the power of storytelling. It's something that we, we basically saw was missing, or it's starting to become extremely missing in social media, is that people are automating all these systems. Yes. And so the real voice of the person that you're following isn't there. So they're automating, sharing photos, they're automating text, they're sharing all these other assets that people are creating, but you don't get a sense of their personality and who they are. So just in that, you know, uh, what, I'm, what I'm finding is that everything becomes like a cookie cutter, so we're all yeah. becoming into robots. Yeah. Like everybody has to do it this way. Go here, p pick f out of five colors, pick right. one out of, uh, you know, yeah. X, Y, Z, do this much. Yep. You don't have many options. So it's like, yeah. it's, it's almost like you're limited and you're, you have, so many right. boundaries around, but we don't call it boundaries. We just call it normal. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's, it's like you're, you're limited you're, it's true. It's from really growing, but it, it helps the corporations. It helps the companies. It helps them um, make more money and yep. to, you know, build and get bigger. And, and I, I think what, you, what you're doing is bringing so much value because you're shifting it up. And, and people yeah. like you, that's why, um, you know, that's one of the things I try to do on the show is to bring entrepreneurs and conscious creative people who are yeah. who actually have a vision and they're trying to bring into reality and um, yeah that's really really fabulous so when's the app available the Pearl so, app. yeah we're in external beta testing right now um, but we're really wrapping up the final features we want to do some stuff to kind of improve the first run experience when you very first install the app make that uh, a little more exciting and interesting but that should be done in the next week or two and we'll submit and be in the app store and hopefully you can get it by the end of this month Oh, great. Like, yeah. what store? Where can we... Uh, it'll be in the Apple it? iOS store, so you can get it. Beautiful. If you have an iPhone, you can get it. Awesome, yeah. awesome. So, let me ask you this. So, do, do you think that uh, being an employee and then coming out and, and running your own business, right. would, I mean, was it helpful? Or do you think you should just be yeah. an entrepreneur from the get-go <laughs> and then... You know, um, there are certain things about being an employee that start to limit your way of thinking. I think you get tunnel vision. But to be honest, when you're in school and you think you've been taught everything you need to know for your job, the reality is school is about you know, almost a decade behind the real world, behind mm -hmm. private sector. So when I left graduate school and got into the industry, what I'd been taught in graduate school was really outdated, uh, especially in tech and in Silicon right. Valley. So I really look at your first job out of school as almost like your postgraduate uh, education. You're really learning what you should be doing. You're going to learn what you're really good at. You're going to learn uh, what is required of you. You're going to learn what you don't like. Mm. And what you thought you'd be doing doesn't often end up being what you do. I mean, I have, I have a PhD in psychology, and I'm in software development. And so <laughs> it doesn't come up very often, right? Uh, so I think it did prepare me a lot for trying to run a small business. You learn how to do things at scale. That's right, the big difference. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, people do go and get an MBA, and they spend all this uh, money on education. And, right. and education is important. But my spiritual teacher, you know, he, he used to say that education builds character. And I think that's something lacking mm -hmm. in our society now because we're, we're, we're thinking that the more education you get, you get to school, and it's all building on making more money. Right. <laughs> and is that true? I don't yeah. think so. And it, now the reality is that we live in a time when the conversations are so open and they're real and, and you can't hide the truth. Right. And the truth right. is that grad, MBA degrees in, in schools don't teach you those things that's, that's, that's right. needed today because I have an MBA. <laughs> <laughs> so I know what you mean. Yeah. And I do this work in Ayurveda. And, uh, and you know, I have to say thank goodness for the MBA because sure. I was able to think in that world of the, and I had a corporate background, so I was able to think in that way of how to build my business, how to get mm -hmm. out there, how to do those things. But when I needed the tools to actually access, like with a computer technology now and marketing and and getting yourself out there in, in, the, in the face of the 
the earth right. yeah. <laughs> so people can find you because yellow books are no longer available, right? <laughs> Yeah, Those telephone yeah. directories? I'm surprised when I see them, but yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I had somebody <laughs> deliver one the other day to me. It was so funny. Yeah. So, you know, um, you're an entrepreneur, and how long have you, have you been um, doing it on your own? Oh, man. Um, so when I first came out to the Valley, I started down the corporate path. Um, I actually started at IBM. So I was at IBM. I was at Apple for a number of years. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I went to a startup. So I had the startup experience way back in, like, 95, 96, kind of the first boom. Um, but then the chaos of all that, I don't know if you were here during that time, but things were like exploding and then they mm -hmm. all kind of collapsed. Um, and to get, believe it or not, stability in my life, I started my own consulting company back then. And so I started doing my own thing back then, um, right at kind of the peak, which is really good timing in some ways and bad timing in other ways. Uh, but then when everything kind of fell apart, I went back into the corporate world and went to eBay. Um, but in terms of Brilliant Forge, I've been doing this, this, this latest stint of freedom. Uh, for about six years now. Mm, yeah. That's wonderful. And uh, let me ask you this about, uh, so if somebody wants to enter the world of entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and they're in the corporate world, yeah. <laughs> what would you tell them? Um, the first thing I'd, I'd say is it's, it's attractive. And that's the thing you hear in Silicon Valley. It's like everybody wants to do a startup. That's the hot thing to do is to do a startup. But not everyone's cut out for it. And so I think sometimes people are running away from something instead of running to something. I think that's critical because I think people will have a bad boss or bad manager or they'll have a bad experience at work. They're like, I want to escape that. I'm going to start my own company. And really what they probably need is just a new job because <laughs> entrepreneurship, you're going to be, if you think you hated your boss, <laughs> you're going to be the worst boss you ever had because it's, you have to work really hard. Uh, so I think entrepreneurs know who they are. You don't, I think, become one. I think you are one. And then sometimes you have to remember that you were one. So if you think back to your childhood, these are the kids that had lemonade stands and paper routes. And you know, I was one of those kids. I always had some business going. And so I've always been an entrepreneur. And when I got into the corporate world, I, I enjoyed it for a little while. I learned a lot. Yeah. But at some point, I was like, I really want to do my own thing. So I think you know when you're an entrepreneur. And then you have to figure out, OK, based on that, if I know that's who I am, so, uh, How do I get started? So, Larry, um, you know, there are probably people, like, uh, always asking the question, well, okay, fine, but how do I know? What, are the, what would you say, <laughs> you know? How would I know? Because I, I, I really right. feel that in my heart, that I want to be a, I'm a risk taker. Sure. So, what are the top three things that you could tell them that, you know, possibly yeah. might help them to, you know, jump into entrepreneurship? Yeah, I've, so I've created a course around this because I went through this process. And so I, I sat down and I said, now what did I do to go through this? Um, and I'm a, I'm a spreadsheet guy. So I actually sat down with a spreadsheet and I modeled out everything. Um, <laughs> we um, call it pitha in Ayurveda. Yeah. <laughs> Structure. Yeah. Everything's like, how am I going to make this oriented. decision? Here are the pros, here are the cons, here's the revenue model. Right. Um, but you really, you want to make a business model. And so that's essentially what you're doing is you're going to sit down you're going to say, what do I love to do? What am I naturally good at? What do I know? How does that become a business? Who am I going to serve? You know, what problem am I going to solve? And before you leave your job, and I think this is critical because it's hard once you've left, when you're sitting there saying, how am I going to make my rent payment, my mortgage, whatever it might be, it's hard to take the big risk that you need to as an entrepreneur. And so I think it's Fantastic. important that you start while you're in your, your corporate job and start modeling that out and testing it. There's so many tools now right. where you can actually test things before you make that big leap and see, is it working? Do people want to pay for it? Do I actually enjoy it? Because mm -hmm. people will say, you know, here's a perfect example. I always hear people, I, I love Airbnb. I love B&Bs. Not Airbnb. This is before Airbnb. Uh -huh. but I love a and b I want to run a and b Oh, yeah. And I then, knew a lot of people that And then they to do, do it, and they're like, oh, this isn't fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's fun to be a guest. And so they think it's going to be fun to run one. But it's very different. So I really recommend that people test the waters, make sure, do you actually love working on this problem? That's fantastic. Do you enjoy the customers? Yes. And then make the decision, yes, I do love it. It can work. OK, I'm ready to do this. Right. Or if you're like a real pitta who's like, like structure, yeah. and the guests left all the food on the table <laughs> and they didn't clean up, boy, yeah. that would not go very yeah, well, yeah, would it? Exactly. Right? Because then, you, then you're stressing out, and you're right. making yourself sick. Yeah. in that process so those kind of little things that people have to really yeah. pay attention to but you know I, I have um, something that I, I think there's a lot of people who are curious about mm. 
because there's a lot of startups. We're in the Silicon Valley, yeah. right? So when people are looking at a great idea they have, sure. and now they want to take it to fruition, and they, th they think, you know, if I can only get an investor, right? <laughs> what do you say yeah. to that? Because you've done that. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I raised a seed round for, uh, for Voice Kick. Um, what I would say is that there's never enough time and money. And no matter how much you plan and you model, I've discovered, and I've, everyone else has discovered as well, it's going to take three to four times longer than you think. That's just the reality. So if you've modeled out, if I get this much money, it's going to take me this long, we'll be okay. We'll have six months of cushion. Well, you better have two years of cushion. And so I really don't think people should raise money until they've achieved what they call product market fit. And I, and I wish I hadn't. We got into a situation where we had to hire a couple of engineers because I didn't have an engineering co-founder mm -hmm. and we needed to pay salaries. And so we raised the round to pay their salaries and hire employees. But that meant we started burning money before we had fit. And we've right. changed the product entirely. I That's wish I'd raise. Yeah, I know. That's how it always yeah. happens, right? Yeah, you get the you get the first prototype, and you think it's gonna. Yep. You go out there and you test it out, and you exactly. talk to people, and they say, "But it's got this part missing, and this right. doesn't work." And then you're always tweaking it, and that's where you need the funding exactly to keep on um, making it a little bit better. So, um, you know, this is this is a fascinating conversation uh, that you know. Thanks, I think a lot of people are grateful that you're sharing this valuable insight on uh, that are wanting to start their own sure. uh, VCs or so. But you know, in, in also talking to you earlier, you, we were talking about mission statements and mm -hmm. vision mm -hmm. and objectives and strategies and right. all of those things. And um, I really like what you were talking about. So can you talk about why it's important to have a mission, yeah. mission statement? Yeah, it's something I was introduced to, to be honest, at, at Yahoo. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Jeff Weiner, who's the CEO of LinkedIn now, introduced me to the, the VMSO model, which is your vision, your mission, your strategies, and your objectives. And it seems like it might be something that only applies to a big company that has the, the luxury of doing that. Uh, but it's actually important even for a small business. And so I think having a grand vision of how will the world be better if your business comes to life, if it succeeds? And then what is your mission to make that vision come true? And so I think it helps guide not only the company, but every single employee in terms of how they work every day, but also how they interact with their customers. Mm -hmm. Because they know what they're trying to do to achieve for those customers. And it really it will influence every decision that you make. And so I think it's absolutely critical that they make one. That's, that's great. Um, the mission and the vision are so critical yeah. to, a, uh, uh, to a company or to an individual as well. Sure, yeah, Right. Because absolutely. before you even start a company, wouldn't, don't you think it would be important for you to have like a vision yeah. for your own life? Totally. <laughs> I mean, it's changed in many ways, this is why I went down this path, mm -hmm. is that I was raised, you know, in the 80s, you know, I'm showing my age, but uh, the too. talk was <laughs> make as much money as possible, you know. Right. Make as much money as possible, get all the nice toys, and, and then you'll be successful and be happy. Um, and so it took me a while to kind of figure out, it. well, for me, it wasn't really about the money. What I really enjoy above all else is freedom. And so when I left to start my own company, I realized this is what I love. I love defining to spend the day how I want to spend it, making the decisions I want to make. If I want to take the day off and, and go hiking with my kids, I can do that. And so I think people should figure out what is their mission statement because they might be surprised when they sit down and they're introspective that it might not be what they thought it was, that something else is actually more important to them. So I had a client who called me up and I just have to share mm. the story with you that um, he called me up and he said, you know, I just want to make a lot of money <laughs> and I want to get there fast. Yeah. And I said, well, I'm not the person for you because I'm not going to, you know, I'm not, there's, there's two worlds. One is the material side and there's the right. other side of you that's a deeper, deep, we call it a spiritual side of you, you know, that's a higher self that aligns you and lets you know whether yeah. you're going the right path or not. So if you're just running after that stuff in the material world and tripping and jumping mm -hmm. over yourself, well, you're never going to get there. It's only going to bring you fear and frustration. Right. And uh, a lot of people, unfortunately, are caught in that today. Totally are. Totally are. And they don't know how to get out of it. So I asked him a question. I said, well, um, what do you do? And he, and he, asked, he told me, he said he does uh, consultations and he likes to spend his time alone. So I said, well, when you, <coughs> he, he, and uh, so I asked him, I said, okay, what did you want to do when you were a child? Right. <laughs> what, did, what was the, he says, well, I like to, um, I like to, I had a lemonade stand. <laughs> <laughs> and I like to have fun. Yeah. 
I said, okay, so you're an entrepreneur and you like to have fun. So let's let's take that to, to bring it to today. Right. So now you are um, you're you're going to these consultations. How much fun are you really having there? He goes, <laughs> well, it's kind of partial because you know you got to do your job. It's okay. It's like I don't really like all the people I consult, but I'm mm. good at what I do, so I'm doing it. And in that, so I said, well, then you're not having fun. Right. That's not your job. It, it's paying the bills, so there's something for you to look at there because what is your attention on? If you're walking in there and already say I come to you, Larry, and mm -hmm. I'm like, um, you know, uh, I'm here doing your consultation and I'm hating every moment of right. it, filling out the forms, giving you the advice. Well, I'm, I'm yeah. not going to be the best fit for you either. I'm not doing yeah. justice to and that's gonna come my through. client. Absolutely, and then you leave the client confused and you're not happy. Right. So don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> totally Go find agree. something that, that's fun for you. You know, bring elements of fun into your right. work right. so that it becomes much more uh, joyful right. because that's going to bring your health, right? You're going to, oh, you won't get a heart attack, yeah. you know, suffering every time you sit down because, uh, you know, I believe suffering is an option. You yeah. can re push the reset button anytime. That's it's right. up to you. That's right. You know, it's totally true. Most people, they just don't even know where to start with that. So, um, so for people who who are preparing to leave their company, right, um, and and start something, what would you say to that? So, you know, what I would say is to actually sit down and create the business plan while you're there. Um, decide mm -hmm. what it's going to be. Like I said, test it while you're there. Um, an important thing, which I think people overlook, is that going it alone is really hard. I mean, if you are a sole entrepreneur without a co-founder or a partner. There's gonna be days that your energy is super high and you're super excited. There's gonna be days where you're like, oh, this isn't working and you're down. And when you have a co-founder, you kind of balance e each other out. You really do. And so I, I have a partner that I work with and there's days where I'm like, oh, this is so frustrating. It's not working. He goes, yeah, but I believe in it and it's gonna be okay. And he'll have days where he's down. And I'm like, hey, this is really important what we're doing. So it's, it's a partnership. Absolutely, just like in any marriage, any yeah. relationship, yeah. right? It's always yeah. a partnership. So in your team, you would say to have a cheerleader, yeah. right? A visionary and a marketing person <laughs> and, uh, you know, just yeah. really bringing it to life for you yourself. You need to balance, yeah. Bring it to balance. And, and um, so do you use marketing? Um, you know, I do a lot of the marketing myself, mm -hmm. but we absolutely do marketing. Um, and we, and I learned a lot of that at Yahoo. Um, so again, my corporate world taught me a lot. Sure. I worked very closely with my marketing partners and people in PR, and I learned how powerful that is. And so that's something that I'm constantly learning. You know, mm -hmm. I think as an entrepreneur, you have to be a lifelong learner. And you know, as you know, nothing's ever done or set in stone. And so every day is a new challenge, and every day you have to learn something new. Uh, and the way we market is completely different than the way we marketed even you know five or ten years ago. So you have to learn all the new ways of doing it. So let me ask you this. How is your wife liking you now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and your kids. Yeah, yeah. Your kids. It's been huh? good. It's been good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, as I said, I spent eight years working really, really hard in the corporate world and I hardly ever had dinner at home. You know, I didn't see my kids very often. Uh, and it was it was because of the pursuit of this this corporate ladder, right, and making more money. Um, and when I took a step back, I got a chance to spend more time with my kids and reconnect. And my wife has said, "You're so much happier now, you know, because I'm taking care of my health. You know, I'm exercising mm -hmm. again, all that stuff." Um, and so it's really improved my relationships across the board, and they've been wonderful. They support me entirely in this, and it's 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 hard, it's risky, um, but they they see the benefit, and so they really want to make it work too. Well, I'm sure your children appreciate having you around and, yeah. and seeing who the, who you are, and yeah, and uh, nice. and you get to see how they grow and yeah. and what uh, you know the contributions they're bringing and giving right. every day because they're growing and yeah. that youth is so yeah. special. It is. You, know. you only get this. Uh, you you never get today back. So every moment with them is is a treasure. It really is. So what is your big message for? Yeah, my. I guess my big message is that I think recently people have confused passion with calling. And so I think mm -hmm. we've, been, we've been hearing a lot, it's like follow your passion, follow your passion. Um, and I think what people really mean is follow your calling. Because we have passions and there are things that we love to do that you know, excite us, but it's not necessarily a business. And most importantly, it's not really serving other people. That's so great, yeah. A calling is about serving other people and that's what a business is. So this is really great because this is a distinction that I try to help people understand in, in, in understanding their own pleasures. 
because right. they think I'm so passionate about this. Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> but it's a pleasure. Exactly. It can be just a hobby, exactly. or it's something yeah. you're chasing, or something you're trying to uh, trying to get at. But sometimes, you know, that um, when you get to the result of it, you know, it's like it's like a yeah. you know a, a, a women, you know, they want they want a guy in their life, and they're chasing after. But it's once they get him, it's like oh, he's boring. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to be with this guy, yeah. but it's the process of it, right? right. It's the process right. of getting there. That's the fun and excitement of it. It's not having the end of it. It is, right. that's too, but it changes the dynamics. Sure. It's a new pl platform now for you to start to uh, do something new with Absolutely. your life. So I think those are really um, important distinctions in people to understand what they put their attention on on a daily basis and what their likes and dislikes are. Right to really get to know themselves from inside out. Yep, that and takes time. You, it does, and if they follow the Ayurvedic principles and they know their dosha, they'll be able to know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, that's the contribution <laughs> right. uh, with this timeless wisdom that can be made in, in the corporate environment or just in our environment in general. And looking at these kids who are now coming into the world, this is a big one. What do you think of them being all on their iPads and their phones yeah. and all these things? What do you think of that? Uh, I'll be honest, I'm concerned. And so, you know, we set time aside and we do, we spend a lot of time outdoors in nature and you talked about this earlier. Uh, but I think it's really important to reconnect with the world and not always be looking through the lens. Yes. And that's, that's the critical thing is stop looking through the lens at life. It's right there, right? And so you have to take time to do that. Wonderful, and so what's next for you, Larry? Um, next is really trying to take this, this app into the market and grow it because I think it has a real opportunity to help people. Um, the thing that I see that's so exciting about it is that it's bringing that authentic voice back to social media. Uh, and for a small business, that's critical. You know, being able to hear the actual voice of the owner connecting with his community or her community or their, their yeah. customers is critical. So, so just in, in uh, uh, a little bit more about that, when, uh, when I'm looking at it, so I would download it onto my phone right. through the iOS app. And then I would have, instead of like the big corporations telling me, go pick black, white, red, and green, <laughs> I would get to do whatever right. I want and, yeah. and pull in whatever photographs and, and um, you know, create it the way I want to because I've seen a couple of things you've done in nature. Right. Yeah. You're out in nature a lot. I am. It's yeah. wonderful because, yeah. you know, w nature is a way to reconnect mm -hmm. and to get regrounded. And nature really speaks because yeah. we are nature too. We, this right. is ext we are an extension of nature. And when you go back to nature, it's such a great way to rebalance yourself mm -hmm. and get yourself back into the um, mode of, um, of life again. Right. So I want to thank you for coming on the show today, oh. Larry, and just being with us and sharing all your wonderful insight and, and the wisdom about how to transition, that bold step. Yeah. That's a courageous step to step into you know entrepreneurship from having a job. That's like, uh, that's everything. So... Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for joining our show, and uh, we'll join you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.